Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a spherical conductor that has 20 microcoulombs of charge on the surface. The radius of the conductor is 0.4 meters, and we're trying to find the electric field inside the conductor, just outside the surface and a small distance away, at radiuses of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0.6 meters from the center. And here the 0.4 plus means just outside the surface of the conductor. So at 0.2 meters, the point is inside the conductor, somewhere about here. So we're going to draw a Gaussian surface like this, where the radius of the Gaussian surface, let's call it R1, is equal to 0.2 meters. And we're going to use Gauss's law to find the electric field at that location. It says that the electric field times the area of the Gaussian surface, I'll go sub G, that means the area of the Gaussian surface, is equal to the Q enclosed by that, so inside that Gaussian surface, divided by epsilon sub naught. So in this case, we can say that E is equal to Q inside, divided by the area of the Gaussian surface, times epsilon sub naught. And I'm doing this in a general format, so we can use the same equation for all three instances. So this can be written as Q inside, divided by the area of the Gaussian surface. Well, since it's a sphere, that would be 4 pi r squared times epsilon sub naught. And we know that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So this can be written to be k times q inside, divided by, uh, in this case, that would be r squared. So we're going to find the electric field at all three locations. The first location would be at a distance of 0.2 meters away. The next one would be just outside the surface. And the last one would be at 0.6 meters. So this would be the electric field here. Let's call it E1. Here would be E2. And here that would be E3. So notice that for E1, there's no charge enclosed at all within that Gaussian surface. So if there's no charge enclosed, that means the electric field must be zero. So in this case, E1 is equal to zero, K times zero divided by R1 squared. So that's simply equal to zero. That makes it easy, which would indicate that if you have a conductor and you have charge on the outside of the conductor, then the electric field inside a charged conductor like that, anywhere inside the conductor, should be equal to zero. Now the electric field for a position right outside the surface. That would be E2, which is equal to K times the charge inside. Now the whole 20 microcoulombs would be engulfed or would be enclosed by that uh, Gauss's surface. So that's 20 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by the 0 0.4 quantity squared, that would be the radius of the Gaussian surface. So now we're going to draw a Gaussian surface just outside the spherical conductor. And so that would be the equation. K, of course, is 9 times 10 to the 9. So this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th times 20 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by 0 0.4 squared. So let's see what we get. And of course, electric field, the units would be newtons per coulomb, 9e to the 9th times 20e to the 6 minus divided by 0.4 squared equals, as so that gives us 1.125 million. So 1.125 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. So a little bit over a million newtons per coulomb. And finally, to find the electric field at this location, we're going to draw a Gaussian surface like this. Again, the charge will be evenly distributed inside the Gaussian surface. We can see that the electric field would be perpendicular to the surface and would be the same magnitude anywhere along the surface. So E3 is equal to, uh, that would be K times Q enclosed, all divided by uh, epsilon sub naught. Oop, no, actually, I'll take that back. I've already worked it out and it would be divided by R3, R3 squared, that would be better. So this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th times Q enclosed, which is 20 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by 0 0.6 squared, because now the radius is a little bit further out. So that would be um, 
times 0.4 squared divided by 0.6 squared equals, and that would be exactly 500,000 newtons per coulomb. And so that's how you find the electric field rather easily using Gauss's law. Also notice that once you draw Gauss's, Gauss's surface outside the charged sphere, this charge on that sphere acts like all of it is at the center of the Gaussian surface. So even though it's distributed over a, sph a spherical shaped object and it's residing on the surface far away from the center, it does act as if, because when we look at the equation, notice that this is definitely the equation of electric field of a point charge Q distance R away from that point charge. So once you're outside that sphere, it acts, all the charge acts as if it's present at the center of the sphere, not distributed on the surface. We get the exact same result for the electric field, which is kind of an interesting thing to note. And that's how it's done.